we're winding up the final day of Cisco Live EMEA, which is kind of cool and also kind of sad. Like it's a it's a blessing and a curse. Like we 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 don't want to leave, but you know it's we're all ready to kind of like wrap up and. As we're kind of winding down this last day of the event, a lot of the conversations I've been lucky enough to have, and probably yourself, are with other people. Like, as our session counts are kind of tapering off, you know, the beginning of the week is always like, session, 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 let's get it yeah. done. Towards the end, you're kind of doing that and talking to people, spending some time with other humans and like, how, how was your trip? How was this? Which I, I really love. And so I was hoping that, Sherman, by having you stop by for a little bit, what we could have a chance to do is just talk a bit about what your experience this week has been like, and then maybe dive into a bit of like how you got started doing things like automation or, you know, and I know it's a really big word, but yeah. like what triggered you to want to learn how to do a little bit more with your time rather than just as our friend Jason Davis would say, finger ops, like typing all day long and operating a network, like what, what brought, to, what brings you to something like Cisco Live? And from there, what makes you kind of get excited about the types of things we have in the DevNet zone? Okay, so yeah, it's a funny story. I was an intern at Cisco, and uh, one day my manager came with an idea to deliver a DevNet Express event. It was oh, yeah. back in the yeah. days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, okay, I was the young one who, know, who knew how to code and all of that, and that was my task. And in three weeks, I had to uh, deliver the DevNet Express event. And I, I knew some, I, I, I have a background in computer science, but I, I was also passionate about net, mm, telecommunications. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't know about how the programmability that our, our, our devices are capable. And I started to learn about that. And uh, yeah, I started to learn about Yang models and Python and Paramico and all of that. And it started to be like very interesting. So I delivered the event, but then you have that question that, okay, so I can extract that data where I can push that config, but what's the purpose? What's more? I mean, maybe we could find more about that. A hundred percent. I, you know, it, well, first, I, I'm so glad you brought Devon Express because I was, that was like the first thing that I got involved with. I, I, I was a sales engineer at Cisco at the time. And I remember at that first sales kickoff with Susie B on stage talking about the DevNet Tiger team and DevNet Express. And we all started getting involved and hosting them for customers yeah. and for partners. It's a lot, it was a lot of fun. Um, and it really kind of made it, some of us who may not have been around it before, like, oh, I didn't know you could do these things. That's kind of rad. Um, I do also really like the idea, of this concept you just brought up, which is something that I think so many of our community members deal with, is you come to, whether or not you come to this event, I'll just say you come to Cisco Live or you come to DevNet, but it could be online, you're trying to do learning, and you see all these sessions, great. Hands on workshop, I'm pointing like you can see. There's a workshop over there, classroom yeah. over here. You sit in these things and you do stuff and you walk away going, wow, that was amazing. I touched a keyboard and I made a thing happen, fantastic. But then five minutes later or whatever, the thought crosses through your head like, but now what? Like, that was cool. I don't have that in my environment, so fun, but then what do I do? So I, I think it'd be kind of interesting if, if you've got kind of some interesting insights on what did, when you encountered that, like, cool, I saw this, but what do I like? What do I do with that information? What did you do? Like, what did you do next at that point? Uh, um, yeah. So w with that info, I started to get to know people. I, I was in CSEF, in Cisco Sales Associate Program, and I started to uh, talk with people and try to share my interest in programmability and DevNet. And with that, I found I, I found some colleagues started to share ideas. And there was one project that I had in uh, in CSAP where we need to do a DevNet project project for one customer. And I had I have done an integration between DNA Center or Catalyst Center now and uh, uh, Netbox. So okay. that was interesting. I mean, actually applying the knowledge to a use case, a real use case. So it's, I mean, it's the they always teach us in school or any courses you ever take that like you know. Doing the thing is, that, is where you actually learn, but so often it's just, especially when we're learning code, or you're learning automation, to automated tools, developer tools, it, it's not that you can't find examples to go work on, but sometimes you do that and you're like, great, but that doesn't feel real to me. Like it's not a thing that I actually needed to do, and I like that you're describing the story or a situation here where it's something you actually kind of needed to, to build out. Um, what happened next? Uh, well, with that, the, the customer was really happy with the integration that we, we've done, and 
after CSAP, I got into the DevNet GV. What oh, yeah. It's called? Yeah, it's a, it was a global team, and we solved corner cases for customers using uh, programmability. So that was really interesting to find uh, use cases, and I don't know, every app you can imagine that our, uh, customers wanted to integrate with our products. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we solved that with DevNet and with some Python, some scripts, and all of that. That's cool. I've, I've worked, being in, in the org for a while, I've worked with that team, uh, the team, many times when I was just still a sales associate or a sales engineer working with customers. Mm -hmm. But even now, like we've collaborated many times on the, you know, the, the DevNet proper side as well as the GVE DevNet side. Um, how do you find, how would you say that like, you find these use cases? Because I think one of the challenges we run into a lot uh, in DevNet is our team members are like, oh, I have this cool idea. That's fun, like great, you have an idea and you want to go build it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But so often, I'm sure people watching are probably thinking this too, like that's cool, but I, I need to know this. I'm a community member, I work at some business, I, I, this is my problem to solve. How do you figure that out? Like, how do you find that thing that someone might actually need you to do for them so that you could go build it to see if you can make it work rather than just saying, I have my own idea? Yeah, um, I, I have an idea about um, this, this this regarding DevNet because sure. you, you learn all this stuff. I mean, you learn technical stuff and all of that and you expect uh, to create a product or a script, something like that, to solve problems, I don't know, for three customers. Mm -hmm. But we know that no customer is alike. Yeah. Right. So yes. basically what you can do is to develop some automation skills and maybe to develop some mini tools or something like that that could help you improve the I don't know, service delivery for that specific client. Mm -hmm. So it's like creating mini tools for your tool chain or something. Yeah, yeah it's like secret web. I like that. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, it's, I, I think I, I've encountered this myself that We've talked about it, or in DevNet, like various groups of us have talked about it, but you, we again kind of sometimes even get in our own head. Like I've, I had this happen at the last customer I worked at before I came to work at Cisco, where you have a situation that like, I need to solve this, and it should be this whole thing, but what you, the, then you get kind of, not distracted, but overwhelmed. Like I want to solve all these things, and you get overwhelmed and you kind of forget that that's great, but the first thing you can do is this. The first little thing you can do is this, yeah. and then you could do this little thing, and then this, and eventually you might get to the bigger thing, but it's okay to start with that little automation. I, I, there was a story that I've told in the past, like, I'll kind of scrub it from the company a little yeah. bit, but uh, a customer that I worked for, um, uh, this is before I came to Cisco, had a situation, somebody in the company had a situation where their whole job, it was like the, the help desk person was assigned this one task to basically copy a bunch of logs from a like a financial system from one location to another location. And they did it by hand every week. Like every Thursday, copy, paste, and they put it over there. And I remember talking to this person for like 30 seconds and like, why do you just, why do you do that every week? Well, I just need to do it. I'm like, we can automate it for you. Yeah. And I remember going and looking it up. I was familiar with some of these things. I'm like, I, I just started Googling to figure out what I could do. And I remember the pushback I got from the person because they really thought that if I got rid of this, that they may not have a job anymore. The person was legitimately worried about this. Wow, okay. Now, I'm over, I'm over exaggerated a tiny yeah. bit, but I re, that has stuck in my head for so long that it helps, it really does, I think, help me empathize with people that we talk to that, you know, we want to encourage automation. We want to encourage them to find ways to, to put the repetitive stuff aside so they can spend more time with their brain thinking about how to solve really interesting and complex mm -hmm. problems. But I don't know, do you, do you find yourself still encountering people who are very hesitant about the idea of like automating things? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a silly question. Um, when you've talked to people who do feel that way, for what, whatever the reasons, can, have you gained any insight from them on like why they might feel uncomfortable? Not just the learning curve, but the actual doing? Um, hmm. That's a tough one. Um, I think, um, no. No, I don't have an answer. No? No, I, they, they just don't want to do it. It's like it's the learning curve, the programming, the, all of that. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes complete sense. I, well, I should say, it makes sense that the ambiguity, yeah, that somebody can't even necessarily articulate why they're hesitant. Ah, uh, no, I have one. Sorry. Oh, please, yeah, good. Yeah, it's uh, by doing that automation, somebody's responsible for that script. Mm, yes. 
that might be an issue. I can totally see that. Like you go download a, go to Code Exchange, not to pick on our own Code Exchange, but go to Code Exchange, find something, that's cool, install it, and now all of a sudden it's like, great, that's become critical, you have to take care of it. They're like, whoa, oh, that's the hold issue. on, I, I wasn't, yeah. I just wanted to see if this would work. Well, it's perfect now, you've got to own it, and now that they've owned something they weren't expecting to have to be responsible for. Yeah. Oh, that's wild, that's wild. This has been cool, thank you for yeah. being here, I really appreciate it. Oh, I'm gonna put you on the spot then, again. Okay. I got a question okay. for you. I have asked this of a few of my guests uh, over the last couple of days. It's the last day of Cisco Live. If you could pick one thing from this experience this week, it could be in the Dead Zone, but it could be anywhere in Cisco. It could be anywhere in okay. Cisco Live. I'm just okay. kidding. It could be anywhere in Cisco Live. If you could pick one thing that you saw, uh, an announcement, a product, a code sample, just anything that you saw that you're like, okay, that's legitimately cool. Like that, that's just really cool. If you could pick one, what would it be? Okay, uh, I'd go with the Terraform provider. Oh yeah, for what? Just in general, or yeah, the, just in general. I mean, for Cal, uh, for iOS XC. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. that, that's awesome. I mean, it's like an alternative for Ansible for yeah. the cloud native people. No, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, super glad to hear that. Thank you for Sherman. Yeah, I really appreciate you being here, man. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, have a good one.